Hello everyone. Welcome to Guru Schools, an online training and consulting company. Here in Guru Schools, we empower individuals like you to unlock their full potentials and achieve their goals. I am thrilled to introduce myself and provide you with an overview of our company and the Salesforce development course, which we'll be going to offer in order to enhance uh, your career. Hi, my name is Sumit, and I'm a Salesforce subject matter expert with Guru Schools with a passion for education and a commitment to lifelong learning. In Guru Schools, we have created a platform that brings quality training right at your First level. of all, let me give you an introduction about the company, what Guru Schools is, what's the features of Guru Schools. So Guru Schools, we offer a comprehensive sections of our online courses and training programs designed to meet the need of individuals at every stage of their professionals and professionals, personal and professional development. The Guru Schools was founded with a mission to support our inclusive community, provide training and placement services. Our virtual classrooms at Guru Schools provide a dynamic and interactive learning environment where you can engage with our subject matter experts, instructors, and fellow learners from around the globe, around the world. At Guru Schools, our team of experienced professionals and subject matter experts are dedicated to deliver the, tra uh, the high quality training, high quality content that is both engaging and practical. We'll be also offering the hands-on experience real world case studies and practical assignments as an integral part of our course. So this is about the Guru Schools. Next, the six pillars of Guru Schools. This is the key feature of a Guru Schools, you can say, and the six pillars are, we'll be providing the instructor-led training so four to six weeks of uh, formal instructor-led live interactive trainings. This can, this can get extended up to eight weeks, depends on the course curriculum. After the completion of the training, we'll be providing the course completion certificate, which is well recognized. We'll also help in the resume preparation based on the training, based on your experience, we'll guide you in preparing the resumes. Along with the training, uh, or after the training gets completed, we'll help you in the interview preparation, some mock interviews. We'll conduct the mock interviews with the participants. Vendor interviewing, coaching preparation, we'll be helping them out that what kind of questions they might be expecting during the client interview. And also, we'll be offering them, we'll be helping them in the project support, the project placement and ongoing project support for up to six months. So these are the six unique features of Guru Schools, which makes the Guru School different from the other training companies. Now, this is about the Salesforce developers nine week content. And this is specifically designed for the US and the Canada candidates. And uh, these are the six, that's the six week course content where we'll be starting from the Apex. Then we'll move on to the DML operations, SOQL operations and SOSL statements, the methods, the OOP concepts, the uh, triggers, the test classes, the basics of triggers and FX triggers, especially we'll focus more with the triggers because triggers is an automation which helps in automating the function, which, which helps in automating the concept. So we'll be focusing more with this along with the all other concepts. And the test classes, because at the end of the day, when we would like to deploy the, uh, when we would like to deploy the Apex classes or our, uh, our triggers, our Apex classes from sandbox to the production, the test classes will be very much required because without creating test classes, it will fail. So we'll be going to work with the test classes. And at the end, in the ninth week, we will be working, we'll be helping you, or uh, we'll be preparing you for the interview along with some questions and yes we'll guide will also give you a guidance on certification program also within ninth week so and 
in order to enroll for this training program, in order to enroll for the Salesforce development training program, we will be expecting that you are comfortable with the Salesforce admin terminology. So that's about the Salesforce developers nine week training program. And uh, for today, I'm going to take up a topic. And the topic is how do we create LWC components. So I'm going to create a uh, project from the beginning. And in order to create a project, create a new project in uh, Visual Studio Code for Salesforce, before that, we need to add some extensions. So as you can see in Visual Studio Code on left side, you can see there's an option called extension. And we need to download and install Salesforce extensions pack. So you have to check that Salesforce extension pack has been installed. So Salesforce package, as you can see, Salesforce extension pack, this package has already installed. And uh, if you see in this package, we used to have the function, uh, we used to have an option to create FX classes. Basically this extension pack helps to uh, create FX classes. It helps to create aura component. It helps to create visual force pages. It helps to create SOQL, SLDS and lightning web component. So in my case, I have already installed this. If you will be doing this very first time, you have to install the Salesforce extension pack, and then only you can begin your, uh, uh, then only begin creating a Lightning Web component. So the very first step is in order to create a Lightning component. So the very first step is that we click on the gear icon. You can see there's a gear icon called Manage. Either you can click on this gear icon, Manage, or else you can say Go. Uh, sorry, view command palette, and you will get a list of commands. So basically, we will be using the, these commands, see, these commands in order to create Lightning Web components. So the first I'm going to do is, uh, I just type it here, SFDX, and create project with manifest. So when I select this option, create project with manifest, so I just click this option, create project with manifest, and it will you have to wait for a couple of minutes because it will be activating the extensions and once the extens extensions will be activated it will recall the libraries and then we are we are good to go to create a new project as you can see what type of project you would like to create so i would like to create a standard project template that's a default one i will be using the standard one we have to specify the project name. So I'll give the project name as, let's say, uh, LWC test, LWC, or I'll just write here AI tech one LWC. Okay, that's the name of my project. Hit enter. It will ask you the location where you would like to set up this project. So I would like to set up this project in my uh, what I have done is I will be setting it up on my location. So I just create a new folder and name as AI Tech One, or let's say uh, New LWC Project. So you have to create a folder. Now this folder you can create before you start creating a LWC project, or you can create it now. So now what we have done, we have created a project. And from here onward, from next time, we'll be using the same pro same project folder in order to create and uh, create and add our Lightning Web component. So as you can see, uh, the new uh, the new project has been created, and we are ready to create LWC component. But before creating an LWC component, as you can see, I'm getting in the under Force app main default. I'm getting few packages few directories like application, aura, classes, layouts, LWC, permission sets, static resources, tabs, triggers. Okay. Now I would like to create LWC component. But when I expand this LWC component, it is blank. And even if I right click on this, I'm not getting any option to create LWC component. The reason you will not be getting an option to create a LWC component is that first of all, we have to establish a connection with our Salesforce org. Because only after we establish a connection, this Visual Studio code will allow you to create a LWC component under this LWC directory. So how do we establish a connection? We click here, manage, click on command palette, 
and I'm going to connect. So I just write SFDX. See, if you're not getting an option for authorization, so wait for a few minutes because it would be setting up the environment for you. So that depends on, uh, that depends, okay, that, that will depend. So we have to wait for a few minutes. So now you can see I am getting an option here in order to authorize an org. And in order to do that, I click on this gear icon in command palette. I'm getting an option called authorize an org. So I click on authorize an org. And when I click on authorize an org, it will be using the login.salesforce.com URL. Click on this. This is the alias. So do we, do we want to give an alias for the uh, for the org? So I don't want to give any alias. I would like to use the default one. I click enter. And it will, uh, basically it will launch the, uh, it will launch the, uh, the web portal for you in order to provide the credentials, in order to give the credentials to sign in. So in order to do this, so in order to do this, let me close all the other windows which I have opened uh, in, previously in our first session. So I'll just enter the username and the password. So basically I'm providing my credentials to log in into Salesforce. And once I provide my credentials, you can see Salesforce will uh, authorize, the authorization will begin and you see it's waiting for authorization. And I'm getting, a, I got a confirmation message here, authorize and all successfully then. That means uh, the connectivity between or the, con the authorization between the Visual Studio Code and Salesforce has been established successfully. And now my Visual Code, uh, this Visual Studio Code will be authorized to create and deploy LWC component or other components onto Salesforce platform. So as you can see, author authentication successful. And what I'll do, I again log in. So basically I just wanted to log in because we would like to check that. So I just log in successfully. And you can see the authorization is successful now. And now we are good to go. And uh, uh, you can just check here, that's the same org instance we connected successfully. And if you just, uh, uh, if you want to see the details, we can just expand it and we can see, we'll be getting the informations like the authorization is successful, see successfully authorized with the org ID and the instance URL login.salesforce.com. So basically the authorization is successful and it, ex it ended with the exit code zero. So before we begin the actual development, we always have to check whether the authorization is successful or not, and then only we'll see. So now it's time to create a Lightning Web Component. So how do we create a Lightning Web Component? In order to do that, I right-click on LWC and say Create Lightning Web Component. And when I click on Create Lightning Web Component, it will ask me the name of the component name. So let me give the name as LWC test one. That's the name of, or I'll just say LWC CMP one. That's the name of my component. Hit enter. And I would like to create this LWC component, uh, register under this LWC directory, enter. And you can see the LWC component gets created. So my, my component is ready. And now further, I can deploy this component onto Salesforce. So my component is ready now. So let's see how do we create a Lightning Web Component. And in whenever you create a Lightning Web Component, you can see three files will be added here. LWC com cmp one dot html. That's the HTML file. Then we have JS file and then meta dot xml file. And each file they have their own uh, users. The first is HTML file. This is the place where we'll be going to design our component, and this follows the this follows the uh, this follows the HTML uh, basically HTML format. Like we have to, will be going to will be going to add the tags. Second is the JS. This is a JavaScript file. It's considered to be as the client side JavaScript. And the third one we have is the Meta XML. So this file is responsible to decide that on what location we would like to display our component, LWC component, or whether our component will be visible 
or to the users or no. So this file will decide that. So let's suppose right now I'm just creating a simple component. Uh, I just create a division. Or I can do one thing. I can directly use here lightning card. Lightning card. To know more about these LWC component tags, I'll share a link in the description. From where we can get uh, from where you can get all the information about the lightning component plugins. And here I just write uh, heading one. Hello. Welcome to my first LWC component. So I created a simple component. And uh, right now we are not customizing the JS. I'll skip the JS right now. But in the meta XML, we have to make this component available for the user. So therefore, instead of false, I set this to true. And the next thing we have to set the target. Target is basically that decide that on what locations your file is, your LWC is going to be deployed. So how do we add it? Targets. And within target, target. And my target is, I would like to see these are the locations where you can add your Lightning Web component. So I just want to make, I want my Lightning Web component to be available for the app page. Target, Lightning home page. Target, Lightning tab. So I just added three locations right now. Then I click on save all. And finally, we will be going to deploy this Lightning Web component on Salesforce. So how do we do that? Right click. So I right click on LWC because we have uh, we, we added the changes in the LWC only. We have done the changes here only. So I right click on LWC and click on Deploy Source to Org. So deployment is begin. And once it deploys successfully, it will deploy the three files, the HTML files, JS file and meta XML file. You can see JS, HTML, and meta.xml file has been deployed successfully on the Salesforce platform. So now let's verify. And in order to verify this, I switch to my Salesforce platform. And in this Salesforce platform, I'll just check Lightning component. So under setup, I just write Lightning component. I just wanted to check the Lightning component has been deployed here successfully or not. And the component name is LWC CMP1. So let's check it out. And as you can see, this component has been deployed successfully. LWC CMP1. This component deployed successfully. Now, how do we preview this component? In order to preview this component, let me open an application. Let me open sales application. That's a standard application. And in order to preview this component, I'm going to add this component on a home page of sales application. So how do I do that? For this, I will take help of Lightning App Builder. So I click on Setup, Edit Page. And on left side, we can see the, con the list of the components. These are standard components, but we'll be looking for our custom component. That's a custom LWC component. And drag and drop it here on the desired location. Then click on save and we have to activate it if it is required. So I'm going to activate. So it's already activated. And then finally, I click on back and you can see the lightning web component, our first lightning web component deployed successfully here. So that's about this. Uh, this about the Guru Schools and the Salesforce development course we'll be offering. And we are offering, along with the free training, we are enrolling for IT training for the field. We're offering free certifications, interview support, and the project support. To, uh, to know more details about the training programs we'll be offering, you can visit our website, www.guruschools.com or you can drop an email to us on training at the red guru schools.com or you can reach out on the given number. We have a LinkedIn page also. You can visit us on LinkedIn also. Thanks, everyone.
and we'll be going to test it. So let's begin. You can see 